Hello everybody, welcome to this video on how to set up your own personal academic website. My name is Scott Rank and I blog and podcast at the site thescholarpreneur.com. I will be showing you the simplest way to set up a site if you happen to be a PhD student, postdoc, associate professor, whatever. This will give you the guide to a bare bones way to set up your own site. It'll only take about 10 minutes of your time. I've written elsewhere on my blog that I think every academic should have their own site because that way you control your digital destiny and you're not victim to some article that might mention your name pop up on the top results on Google. So if a search committee is looking at you, they'll see your personal site and not that. So all that to say, I think your site should be something like scottrank.com, not scottrank.wordpress.com because it's more professional. That scares some people because maybe they don't have much of a technical knowledge. So I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process to setting up your own site, and again, it'll only take about 10 minutes. Now the first thing you need is web hosting to host a private site. So we're going to go down here, this is my uh, site, The Scholarpreneur, and click here on resources for Bluehost, I think it's the best site for hosting your own personal website, and click on get started now. Then this will take us to a hosting plan. If you happen to want one for a long time, which I think most of us will, click here on the 395 starter set. Now you need to check your domain. I recommend looking for just your first and last name and seeing if it's available. You can choose .org uh, because you're a nonprofit. So I'll type in Scott Rank. And if I checked in if it weren't available, then I would add something like Scott Rank PhD. And that should probably do the job. Okay, wait for it to see if it's available. And it is, good. So all I will do is go through here and input my information. Okay, da da da, starter set. Domain privacy, I recommend having that. Basically that means that your private information won't be splashed across the internet, which uh, if you value your privacy, which I do, I would recommend that. Site Backup Pro, um, you can choose whether or not you need it. There are free widgets that will mostly do the same thing. And Site Lock Domain, I don't think that's as necessary. Billing Information, it's my little black box to make this redacted like a CIA document. And there we are. Now, uh, uh, skip over all these upgrades, go down, da 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 da, and click on Complete. Then create your password. There we are. Now I will log in to the account. So we have an account, but we need something that will allow us to um, actually produce the website content. We can install this very easily, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so I clicked on hosting. Right here you can see website and do install WordPress. WordPress is by far the best thing online for creating content. Just do that one click and you're done. Click on install. Okay, that's the domain. I have read. Okay, and we're just waiting for it to set up WordPress. Okay, so now it's done. Just click on My Installs. Okay, so uh, in order to get a password for this WordPress site, then you just enter the email address that was used for um, setting up your Bluehost account. So go to your email account and I'll go and do that off the screen and then come right back and input it here. And here we are. 
Now, all we have to do is do some very simple things to set up. The first thing we have to do is just enter some basic information about the site. So first go to Settings and then General down here. Site title, I'll just have Scott Rank, PhD candidate, tagline, the academic homepage of Scott Rank PhD, email address, whatever that happens to be. Okay, then click Save Changes. We're now going to hop up here to Appearance and do Themes to make the site look nice. I'm going to use a pretty basic theme that you see on a lot of default WordPress pages. Click up here to WordPress.org Themes. Okay, and just type in Pilcrow. And there it is. Click on Install. And Activate. And there you are. Now you have a theme. Now you need to add some content to your front page. For a simple academic website, I think you really only need about three things. You have your front page where you say who you are, what your research is, a contact page so people can get a hold of you, and of course your CV. So if somebody wants to know about your research, they can find it all in one place. I'll show you exactly how to set up those three things and a couple of simple graphic tweaks you can make so your website doesn't look too bland and generic. Okay, there you are. Also up here, uh, it says your site is displaying coming soon. Once you're ready to launch, click here. So let's just click there and launch it. Now we are going to add the three pages that I talked about. Go up to Pages, click on Add New. This first one here is going to be your home page. So um, I would just write in my name here. Then what you want to do, this will be on the very front. Um, I like to have some type of profile picture and then a general description of your research. I'm going to add some media. I already kind of cheated. I uh, made a file beforehand. Okay, there's my profile picture. I'll insert it into the page. And then here, what I'm going to do is just add some general content about what I do. Let me give you a template that I think is useful. Okay, and there we go. The picture is a line left. I like Scott Rank is a professor of whatever. He is the author of fancy book or article. His work has appeared in this or that journal. He's received these fancy awards, grants, and postdocs, and he studied at um, whatever programs I study at with this famous academic. Now, to make this look nice, of course, with each of these paragraphs, you might want two or three actual sentences so it fills out a little better. Uh, just to give you an idea of what that would look like visually, here I copied this text, and uh, I'll just plop it in the page so uh, you can get a sense of how it fills out. Okay, so that is our first page. Then the second one we're going to add is a very simple contact form. We'll wait for that to load right now. This one will just be CV. Again, I pre-filled this out, so just take wherever your CV is. Of course you have one. Uh, in Microsoft Word format. I would uh, just like to copy that here. Uh, come over here. Paste it. And uh, if you don't want any funny formatting things uh, to get stuck in there, sometimes that does happen. I like to highlight everything and then click on this little eraser that says clear formatting. Sometimes weird little things get in with the transfer from Microsoft Word to WordPress. Okay, then click on that for the CV page. Now we are going to add one more page, and that is just the contact page. 
go to my text file here where everything is located. Okay, contact. Very simple, just name, university, location, phone number, email address. Okay, so we have our three pages. Now we need to do some things to the page itself so it looks nice and it's formatted correctly. We'll go to Appearance and then Theme Options. What we're gonna do is, um, right now it's this one, Content Sidebar. We're gonna go to Full Width Sidebar. The reason is we're making the most basic academic website possible. If you want to, you can tweak this, but we're gonna re remove anything like the most recent posts, whatever, because we're not making a blog where you're updating it regularly. This is kind of like a digital brochure where all you have is your research and how to contact you. Save changes. Next, we're gonna go down to plugins and do add new. Uh, I won't get into the details, but plugins are things that tweak your WordPress site. And we're gonna take away some of the extra filler uh, that might be there. One of that is uh, so people can't leave comments. And another one is so that the date is not shown because again, it's a static front page. So if you made it um, now and two years from now, people see it's two years old. We don't want that to show up. We'll do two uh, plugins. The first is WordPress post date remover. Search for that. Okay, WordPress date remover, click on install now. Click on activate plugin. Okay, and then we'll add one more plugin. This is called no page comment. And it does exactly what it says. That way there aren't people leaving comments on your page for whatever reason. Okay, and then to activate the no page comment, go down here to settings and then click on no page comment. And you just uncheck everything here and then you click on disable all comments on posts. Then disable all comments on pages and disable all comments on media. And that should do the job. Next we'll go to reading. What we wanna have is a static front page. Go down here, click whatever uh, name you put here. Nothing for post page. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't wanna have a regular blog roll. It's just one thing on the front. Uh, now we're gonna clean up some of the pages. Click there and we're gonna delete the stuff that came pre-installed with WordPress. So with the sample page, hit um, trash. Okay, good, we just have three pages right there. One other thing, uh, this is a very simple tweak to make your site appear better, is if you go to appearance, go to header. These WordPress sites always come uh, pre-installed with some generic image, you know, just these books. And you'll see this on WordPress blogs. I don't think it looks very good because it just seems like you threw up the page and didn't really know what you were doing. We're gonna do just a really simple tweak to make this look better. So if you go up to current header, um, click on add new image below. And what you need to do is find an image that roughly fits these dimensions, 990 by 257. Even if it doesn't fit them perfectly, that's fine. Um, you'll actually be able to fit this in manually and WordPress will let you fix it. So I'm gonna click on Upload Files, click on Select Files and go to Header Image here. This is something I found earlier. Um, it's a picture of Dolmabache Palace in Istanbul. I'm an Ottoman historian, so I'm looking for something kind of Ottoman and whatever your research field is, find an image that correlates to that. So I'm just gonna click on this um, and it will actually let me select and crop because my image is square and they're looking for something that's more rectangular. So you can see right here, I just find the place that I think looks the nicest. I'll go right there. Uh, click on crop, Im crop image down here in the corner. And there it is right there. It just uh, makes it look more kind of fitting to my research field. Uh, so there I am. I have the homepage, contact, CV. I'll go back up here to the upper left and click on save and publish. 
Okay, so it saves, so I'll hit this X here in the upper left-hand corner. All right, so here we go. Now I am going to go to um, scottrank.org and see what it looks like from someone just surfing the web or maybe uh, someone interested in my research or a search committee or whatever and what they would see if they checked it out. So here is scottrank.org. As you can see, it just has my name up here, home, contact, CV, and there it is. Oh, let's see that reply box is still down there. Um, let me find out what I have to do with the plugin in order to re uh, remove this one second. Let's go back to Okay, I see the problem that you actually do have to click on all of these things for disabling all posts. Okay, and then we'll go back to Scott Rank, PhD candidate, refresh. All right, and if you look down, you do not see any of that. Then you can just click on contact. And you have created your very first personal academic page, and that's really all it takes. Of course, you can do a lot of things to tweak it, and check out the blog posts that I have about web pages on the scholarpreneur.com, and I'll link to other academic web pages if you want to do anything fancier uh, and even include a blog or teaching curricula, things like that. But just for a bare bones site, this will really do the job. So thank you so much for joining me, and I hope this was useful for you.